thank you so much for for joining me today, Rodney. Looking over your sort of career path and, and journey, you've done a lot of interesting stuff before Solo Funds, and Solo Funds seems to be an incredible venture, and, and we'll get into that soon. But let's talk about your your sort of journey and path before Solo Funds. Uh, definitely. Uh, originally from uh, Baltimore, made my way. Uh, I'm, I'm a graduate of uh, Howard University and uh, West Virginia University as well. Um, eventually, uh, I started my career at Procter & Gamble. I was, a, I was a brand manager there. And then uh, fast forward to my first venture, which uh, was Listener. It's kind of my introduction into, into, into financial services, but in technology as a whole. And, uh, and then, then I made my way to Solo Funds. I, th- I think along the way, I've done a, a lot of things, but that's the, uh, that's the abbreviated version of uh, <laughs> What, what did uh what did listener do what, what was that venture yeah uh listener honestly it was a it was a premise I, I was the first marketer at procter and gamble um to to write patents and mm. you know i was like looking at business opportunities for for the for the brand that i was on you know connecting the the opportunities of technology was something that i was just really good at but uh, one of those opportunities was just looking at how we were shopping as a whole consumers and Mm -hmm. just had an idea that you know if i could create a better way to to connect devices and share data between devices that it would make um, shopping and things like that significantly easier Um, so listeners actually in financial services it's, it's a it's a wireless communication technology that allows for data to to be shared between devices easier um, and faster and more secure. It actually uses audio that uh, humans can't hear, but uh, devices oh. can actually decipher and uh, communicate with each other. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty wild. So financial services has sort of been around and been your forte for for a little bit. It seems like what was sort of the the starting point for solo funds. Like, what was that? I know you have a co-founder on it. Like, were you guys talking, you know, previously about starting, you know, fintech companies, or was this something you brought to him, or vice versa? How did the the origin story for solo come about? I was doing pretty well, practicing and gamble, and uh, and, I, and I got that. Really young. I was I was 24 years old when I started at Procter and Gamble in brand management. Um, post um, graduate degree, right? Mm-hmm. So right. I was doing pretty well. Going and then when I started my my, my company, uh, Listener Listener is is now going to you know celebrate its 10 year anniversary. Um, wow. It raised 40 million dollars. Investors like Visa. It's a great company and, and it's going to have a great life, mm-hmm. right? But I'm from Baltimore and I shared. I shared a number of experiences with my co-founder, Travis Holloway, and it was literally one holiday season. We, you know, connected and we were just talking about the shared experiences of friends and family needing small dollar loans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was anywhere from $50 to $100. And, you know, when you're in those types of communities or family circles and you're the family member or the friend that's doing a bit better financially, you tend to take on the burden of that type of family or circle need. And we 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 really just got like stuck on that problem. And you know, we, we kept researching about it, and it became pretty apparent that it wasn't something that was just connected to the community that we were from. It was actually connected to most Americans, where most Americans can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. And, and really live on pretty tight budgets. And, and FinTech as a whole really hadn't addressed uh, their needs in a way that we thought was equitable. And, and that was the premise behind uh, Solo. And Solo, just to, I guess, to, to sum it up for, for listeners, is sort of a, a quick sort of micro loan app where anybody can come on and, like you said, apply for $50, 100 bucks, and sort of anybody on the other side of it can agree to that right, with sort of a few taps and just agree to, you know, to loan them the 100 bucks at, you know, a small interest rate. And it sort of widened that community rather than just a small circle of, you know, family and friends. And some people might feel awkward, right, asking a family or a friend for money like that. Like, this kind of opens it up a little bit to, you know, a wider audience where everybody can be assistive, right, and, and be sort of have it, have the community be, you know, all states and all people from all communities rather than just keep it local, is that is that kind of is that summing up correctly? I mean, you definitely summed up the the major points, right? Borrowers come on our platform; they have complete control over their terms. They self-select mm-hmm. how much they need, what they need it for, 
and ultimately what they're willing to pay for um, the loan request and they, and they post it to a marketplace, right? That's visible across the U.S. Mm, okay. um, and it, you know anyone that could re- that would resonate with that request. Maybe they resonate with the reason. Maybe it's for a return, but mostly it's to make an impact, like direct impact to their fellow human. And 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 that's that's the community what we, that we've created. And I don't know if this was a you know a plan in the beginning to do so, but was it just part of the platform that it could ascension? It could eventually like eliminate maybe these payday sort of loans that have, you know, have such high interest rates and really are not healthy for communities, right? And not not healthy for for borrowers. Is that a main thing to that the platform focuses on, or that that's just kind of going to happen because the platform is there and that's just an you know an ancillary you know positive that comes from it? Those are those are major purposes of this platform to be transparent, like you know, like even your latter point building communities it was super important that the entity that benefited from this behavior were part of that same community right mm-hmm. that's how you kind mm-hmm. of redistribute right. wealth right. right you know as part of our b corp certification it came apparent that 82 percent of our members actually reside in underserved zip codes according to the u.s census that means lending members and borrowing members live in the same neighborhood Hmm. Um, and that was like so exciting to us because that was one of the things we wanted to go out and accomplish because that that's what it's about right the, the problem uh, sometimes I like to articulate the problem with payday and other types of loans is that it's not just about the APR it's about the fee structure it's about the design mm-hmm. it's about mm-hmm. the fact that there's more of those institutions and those communities than than row banks or mm-hmm. even McDonald's right and 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 when they profit off of the community it doesn't doesn't come back to the community right, right? great great point and yeah. and, that, and that was that's that's a really big problem you know we understand that fees need to be charged for services provided sure sure but you have to figure out how to redistribute it and that's one of our biggest things that we were very very excited about and when you talk about because look there needs to be like you said it needs to be fees like it's a company. It needs to be, you know, sustainable. Like like anything else, it needs to to thrive as a business. So when kind of looking at the business model, what where did their the fee the traditional in the industry like the APR and the fees like did you did you try to reassess that and maybe build that from the ground up? We we believe that you can't teach financial literacy. You have to empower financial literacy. You have to like put it in their hands. So the, for example, um, and and, and solo. There's no default fees. There's no mandatory fees. There's no, everything is optional and everything is based and, and controlled by the borrower. So the borrower has complete autonomy and control over the, over the um, optional tip and donation that he or she can choose when requesting a loan. Um, it's even optional hmm. on repayment. Uh, it's even optional on repayment. Now, there's a couple of things that have happened in this social experiment that we did. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Because I would tell you that every VC in America yeah. didn't, didn't like that. They were like, <laughs> this isn't going to work. But we are teaching people the cost of capital. Um, mm-hmm. What happened mm-hmm. was that as borrowers used a platform and were paid on time, they naturally selected less to pay for the loan requests on their own. We didn't suggest it. We didn't recommend it. It was naturally. So like we, we every single request, they actually pay less, um, which is they're learning that, listen, wait a minute, if I pay on time, I mm-hmm. should be able to, 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 to get this cheaper. The, the, the other aspect that's really important is that repayment on time is something that has, has completely gone from, from communities that I know. When you think about like traditional credit products, it's really, they really want you to pay over time. They yep. really want you to hold a balance and pay small payments consistently over time. I think with the, the cheat code in the credit industry, it's not paying over time. It's creating a balance and paying it off relatively immediately, mm-hmm. right? And then, you know, consumers who understand that, they only spend credit on things that they can ultimately repay in a short period of time. Those are the consumers that have really good credit. And we wanted to figure out how to teach this community that that's what you should do. You should only ask, you should only ask for what you can pay in a relatively short period of time. And then you should, you should, you should honor that 
And then the next time when you ask or you need that capital, it should ultimately be cheaper. Hmm. And, and, and that was our social experiment that we proved. And it, it goes against all of the rules of sure. traditional models. You know, I think, I think when you're, you know, that's one of our things that we always talk about, right? Like we just, we like intimately know and breathe the, the average American, the, the coffee barista, mm-hmm, the bartender, mm-hmm. the DJ, the guy in the Uber, the woman that's cleaning our houses, right? We, we connect more to them so then who we we go to work with every day when you talk about credit score and credit history and traditional ways of that being related to the world or being calculated does does the platform then build a person's credit up over time like is that i guess is that a data point that these credit score companies will look at as as acceptable, right? And, and and maybe even broader, like what is your thoughts on like credit scores and that whole sort of world? Because it, it seems like you maybe could disrupt that in a way as well. Yeah, definitely. The 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 right answer is not yet. I, w- I will tell you that we we continue to work or we've continued to attempt to work with a number of credit bureaus to try mm-hmm. to 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 leverage the activity on our platform to build credit. I will tell you though, we, we definitely have an innovation coming out where it's we believe it's going to be accepted. Um, so okay. we will start to 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 have a credit builder product within Great. within the company, not today, but soon. Credit bureaus, I think, have have failed many Americans, and especially in in this particular market segment. Um, and I, I'll give you two reasons. For whatever reason, our platform has three times better default rates than what uh, traditional lenders to our same market has in comparison. And, you know, obviously they're using credit bureaus and we're using something else. So do I think we're smarter or better than credit bureaus? Probably not. I just think that we've understood the market better and we've built a model that is learning faster. So what we use is banking data. Thank, thankful for Plaid and the yeah. number of open banking companies. Yeah, man. Well, that's great. <laughs> you know, just be transparent. There's no like super rocket science here. We're just leveraging Plaid's banking data for the past 24 months of a, of a user, and we're taking into account their cash flow. We mm-hmm. used to we used to internally before it ever launched, we would say we need to understand their hustle. We need to understand their ability to pay a bill, like. How do, how, where, where are they getting money? Where can we see that they have some hours at Macy's? Great. We're seeing, it seems like they, they picked up, they, they started doing some rides in Uber. Wait a minute. They're also selling t-shirts on Etsy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. There's a deposit from mom. They have a mom, <laughs> right? Of course. <laughs> but, but you got to understand that's the real American. It's yeah, oh, for always, sure. It's like so simple where, you know, you have the great job. No, it's mm-hmm. not that. So we wanted to take that all into consideration to understand your ability to repay. And that's kind of what we did when we built the score. And then over time, it continues to get smarter with every cohort of, uh, of lending that the platform is enabling. Is there an age limit? Because it seems like this is a great tool for young people, right? Even like, you know, high school or college. And I mean, I guess it matters if they have a bank account or not, but it, it seems like a great learning tool because, you know, growing up, like finance was not, it's not taught, right? Like, it, I, I mean, just where the schools I've been to, and I've been, to, I went to three high schools and like four colleges, man, I've been through the education system at a lot of different levels. And unless you under you even know what finance is, like you would never take that course, you know? So like we come into the world very sort of uneducated around what finance is, right? And so like, there's, a, there's also an education opportunity, I think, here to, to onboard, you know, individuals to do what, you know, our, our education system just, just, just has not done. Do, do you see that as also a win that the platform could, could actually utilize? 100%. You know, I mean, that's, you know, today, the minimum requirement is uh, 18 and a, a bank account. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We're, we're going to, we believe that children are grassly underserved as it relates to financial services, just for the same reasons that you have. Mm-hmm. Our financial services as a whole, they care about deposits. 
So, you know, as a kid, you're not going to have a lot of deposits. So it's not a lot of banks <laughs> running to you to start an account and to teach you healthy accounting and account behavior and things like right. that. So, but at the same time, for what the kid needs or, or wants and, and or that micro loans could fulfill that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and, and how could you, again, offer things that allows them to understand that, hey, things co- have a cost, things have a commitment, that means you have to repay it back, and you're rewarded when you keep that honest and transparent. Those are like the basics of life, right? <laughs> like, it, it, like you, you, if a kid teaches that, they'll learn to not steal when they don't need, when they don't have it, they'll learn that if I do need it, if I, it, it needs to warrant not what it actually costs, but what it truly costs, which is the total cost, not the APR. I think APR is a consist, like it's inconsistent when you think about total cost. If you ever right. bought a house, that right. was like my biggest surprise. It was like, what's what are all of these other fees? <laughs> like, so many, so many. You know, that's not the total cost. That's not my total cost. Why why are we just talking about APR? You know, and these are just things that I've just learned over time. And 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 really, I think this is our social impact organization. This is our social impact company. We're gonna try to bring products and services to this market in ways that are simple but design and teach good behavior. But we want them to get into traditional services. We want them Mm -hmm, to to mm -hmm. have traditional things. We're just going to make it simple and we're going to make it honest and we're going to make it transparent. How has the response been thus far from the community, from both, you know, borrowers and lenders? What is, I guess, what's some of the feedback on how this has sort of impacted their life, right? I mean, when, you know, something like this, like you said, you know, day to day, just to make your life easier in some little way, it was like a huge win. Yeah, I mean, I, I will tell you, to to be uh, still a tiny startup with very very limited funding, it hasn't been easy for us mm-hmm. for, for many reasons. And and I think we've done an incredible job at at meeting our consumer. You know, I think from a from like a, a borrower rate, we 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 hover around the eighty five to ninety five ninety percent consumer satisfaction mark, like. Like whether it's like overwhelmingly positive, you know, we 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 get tons of letters, tons of thank you, um, notifications on just how they feel empowered, how they feel equitable, how they feel control, all of us, how they feel like they have a choice, right? Like, right, right. Like it's all of these things that you can't necessarily articulate, and and I, I would tell you there are other things that's also interesting about it is that they're learning through us. They're like learning the total cost of something like they're like mm-hmm. wait a minute mm-hmm. this i can't I, I don't want to go i'm smart enough not to go get a payday loan and i'm smart enough not to overdraft or increase my credit cards to max <laughs> this is a smarter choice in the overall scheme so um things like that um i would tell you from our lenders perspective which i am truly thankful for the individuals who have stepped up since the beginning to to fund these loans, yeah. you know, I would say, you know, in the beginning, it was it was tough. And <laughs> honestly, most of our lenders that continue to stay, they were just making an impact because ultimately they were having more losses than than gains. And 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 we were, you know, and within that though, we we innovated. I mean, one of our product innovations um, in 2020 that changed the trajectory of the business was the creation of something that we call lender protection. Hmm. Um, and lender protection was our attempt to stabilize our marketplace and make our marketplace safe. If you mm-hmm. think about marketplaces like StockX or Etsy or even eBay, they, it's a, they have like a duty to make sure that you get the product or service that you um, sure. have been contracted Absolutely. to get, right? And, and, and that's, that's what our attempt was. So for a fee, in the event that the borrower doesn't pay you back on time. Solo steps in and credits that particular lender. Hmm. Um, I think number one, it was. I think lenders were shocked. When, when it's it's it was the first of any type of think of anything that you've ever invested in, stock market, crypto, Bitcoin, and they all say, "Hey, listen, for a fee, <laughs> you can opt into this, just in case you have losses. I'm gonna make sure your losses don't 
you don't have bosses. <laughs> um, and so like, you know, we're really excited about that. That definitely in, 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 uh, significantly changed the trajectory of the company. We've grown tremendously. Yeah. You know, I think we're, we're nearing 200,000 um, loans. Wow. Um, and, and, and that's a testament with our tiny team and our tiny funding. That's only a testament for organic growth. Crazy. Like we don't have any big marketing campaigns. This is people <laughs> telling people and getting really excited about it because, you know, they were stuck on the side of the road, needed a loan. Some person from Idaho gave them that loan Crazy. and they're excited about it. Yep. There's, I mean, micro loans and, and sort of micro funding has been around for a long time, sort of in other parts of the world, specifically like developing countries. Like there's parts of the world that this has been tested and, and done well, done bad in, in some aspects. Did you look at other parts of, of the world sort of, you know, doing this and maybe that have been in this sort of micro loan industry for, for decades now? Was that anything that you looked at to try to, to try to take some, something from? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we did a lot. You know, we looked at models like Tala mm -hmm. and Branch. We, we looked at, there's, there's some patriarchs to micro um, lending out of Southeast Asia, as well as uh, a number of other country uh, companies. Um, and, we, and we definitely um, took those into consideration. You know, but before we ever wrote a line of code, um, we, we participated in, I think it was three, accelerators hmm. um making our way across the country um nice. literally yeah we were in columbus ohio in the fintech accelerator then to kansas city to, then to, to to cincinnati ohio then to kansas city and it was about from 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 idea to launch it was probably three years oh wow um, yeah we we actually spent a, a ridiculous amount of money um with legal before we mm. ever yeah. wrote a line of code. It's so hard to innovate in the United States. And, and that's the ultimate reason why I think micro lending as a whole or peer-to-peer -peer lending as a whole were, were challenged in the United States because it's really, really hard to innovate. And it's hard to innovate because of the regulatory scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, the, it's kind of like counterproductive. You say, well, we want innovation. We want, to, want you to build products for financial inclusion, for example. And that's essentially what a micro lending product is, right? Sure. It's for a, a group of segment that needs to be include, included in a financial system that have been excluded. But they say you, you have to fit into the traditional regulation that has been set for before. You have to sit in a traditional model. And that actually doesn't actually make sense, right? Because whenever these regulate legislations and rules were created and whatever part of the centuries ago or whatever I'm, I'm i'm being dramatic but sure the point is when they were created they weren't created thinking about all americans <laughs> right and that, that's just transparent and i mean you tell me if you like I, I would go to any regulator any to talk to any governing body and and do you believe that when this rule was written that it took into account lower income it's not just about ethnic ethnicity it's about lower income Americans, right? I went to school in West Virginia, I went in Appalachia country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know Appalachia country and I know Baltimore. And, 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 <laughs> I, and, I, and I, would, I would argue that they were not taken into consideration. So the biggest problem is that, that was the, that's the biggest problem is just that the regulatory environment is just not designed for products right. like this. And I hope to, and we hope that we can help create frameworks for business models like this, create opportunities for others. This we can't fix this problem alone. We need many players to 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 truly even have a chance at uh, at fixing this problem. Yeah, well, part of when you see these, you know, fintech solutions or fintech companies, they often have to raise 20, 30, 40 million out the gate very early on to deal with sort of whether it's regulatory you know, systems and, and lawyers and making sure that that part is always taken care of. So it sort of eliminates a lot of people from the playing field, just even from a start from a founder perspective. If like, I have to raise all this money just to like, start at first base, because of the regulatory environment, 
but I think that hopefully things like plaid, <laughs> you know, stripe for, for payments. And there's a lot of different things coming out that allows at least the, the initial idea to sort of get looked at and say, Hey, can we do this? Can we do that? I, I'm hoping that the regulations and the regulators just start to see that a lot of the barriers are kind of taken care of upfront by these bigger sort of platforms like plaid, right? It kind of, you don't have to go build that infrastructure. You just need to build on top of it. And plaid can maybe handle a lot of the regulations for you almost because they're kind of handling everything. And you, you sort of don't deal with like the bank accounts and stuff like that. You're just kind of building on top of their infrastructure. So do you see it getting better from a regulatory standpoint? Yeah, I mean, transparently, right? I mean, today we wouldn't have had a chance to do what we're doing today 10 years ago, yeah. let alone 70 years ago, right? Right, um, right. Because we're, we're building on the, the on these fintech infrastructure companies that are making it easier. And 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 I, and I think that's what, you know, to be transparent, some of the first fintechs that are created by underserved communities are 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 either about to launch or have launched like us, but they 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 didn't they, none of us existed mm-hmm. five years ago, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I do think I do think they're making it. It's make it's become easier. Uh, it's a, it is a significant. It's still a significant financial commitment, right? When you think yeah. about other startups, other ventures, even my first venture, um, I was able to do a lot more with. It's a, it's an idea, so you know a group of bright engineers can can get that done. There's significantly other uh, considerations you have to think about in financial services. Um, there are approvals, right? Mm. Even Plat doesn't necessarily. Everyone that wants to use Plat, you just can't use Plat. <laughs> right. No. no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You have to be approved if you're using one of the banking as the service providers. The sponsor bank has to ultimately approve. And yep. every, there's a number of approvals that have to happen. And 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 that can be a challenge and and take time. And uh, I mean, we're we're I, I would think we we were lucky to to partner with the infrastructure companies. We're like a case study for Plaid. We're on their website. We're great. Man. We're gonna That's we're gonna great. be we're like a case study for Microblink. We're we're gonna be a case study. We're a Visa Fast Track program. Great. Um, and we're case studies because everyone said this wouldn't work. Yeah, I think that it's and to do it with all organic growth right that's also a really really interesting part of this because a lot of companies have to spend a lot of money on marketing getting a user base they have to use facebook they have to use instagram snapchat to get users to their consumer app right or just their app downloads it's like how, how do we how do we spend enough money just to get downloads and users right where when you prove organic growth so early on I mean, that is such a difference maker. It's just so different from any other type of of product when you have such early adoption like that, especially in, in, in fintech, man. Like I said before, I mean, usually these fintech companies have to raise so much money, you know, just to get users to use their product. It's awesome. It's almost like a commodity at this point, all the different like, you know, just fintech apps that, that do banking, right, as a service or something like that. But Nothing like this that I've seen sort of exists from the organic side of things where you say, hey, we're going to go community first, build this as like a grassroot thing. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's interesting how like doing things out of necessity. Mm-hmm, right. Is, it makes you do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my co-founder and I sometimes are, we're so frustrated because, you know, we're, we're bigger by by consumers right we're bigger by our members we're much bigger than these fintechs that are raising 30 40 50 million dollars right but we we go to a team that's much tight like (laughs) like we hired our first growth person our first growth person has been at the company for i think she may be reaching her three months (laughs) she's she's the she's the first growth person that we've ever hired we only have one person like her in the the entire company she does everything called marketing <laughs> it's it's right? but i, I always yeah. tell people like instagram sold for a billion dollars of facebook and it had a dozen employees right sure. so now with the tools that we have it's just about you know product market fit 
getting the right team together out of necessity, like you said, believing in what you do, knowing that on the ground, it works, not just looking at data and saying, Hey, this is an empty space in the market that we should build something for. It's actually seen in the real world of like, Hmm, there's a huge, huge problem here and hole in the market. Cause you could see it physically day to day. Right. And touch the people that it's affecting. That's much different. I think than a lot of these other, you know, FinTech companies out there. I want to end on just the last question a little bit about the future. Um, and like you said, I, like first growth higher, like very early stage right now, but it seems super promising, but let's look maybe three to five years down the line. What is, what does success look like for you and, and, and the team? We, we want to make a serious impact to, to everyday Americans. We Americans, we don't like to, to, to say that like we have a low income problem. We have like, we, 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 we're like sometimes proud. And when we compare ourselves to other countries, we don't think we have a lot in common to, to third world country, uh, countries. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like to think of the, the everyday American has more similarities to, to, to lower income countries than, than, than we think. And we yep. used to say that, that America, has the, America has the largest and fastest growing emerging um, class. <laughs> so like we, we want to make a real impact there. We, we, we want Solo to be much bigger than a financial company. There, there's never been a time that you've like said, I wanted to go buy a JP Morgan Chase um, <laughs> and wear it around, right? Uh, there, there isn't a financial institution that has probably really nailed that, right? Because at the end of the day, you don't necessarily feel that they have your best interests, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and Solo has a chance to be that. We, we dropped uh, in, a, in a apparel line, for example, in August, and we sold out our members bought it. Wow. Right. Love like it. that's weird. That's not, <laughs> that's not weird. That's because they care. Like they're like, even though I borrow from like, this is the, this is the type of thing I want to get behind. Mm -hmm. So like for us, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to kind of, we want to redefine what FinTech and financial services means to, to everyday Americans. We're going to do that as broad as we possibly can. I, um, but I will tell you where I'm ultimately getting about other countries and global is that we're going to go global much faster than mm. anyone ever thought and ever think. Because if you think about us and just like raw business things, we've had product market fit for years and we're growing mm. organically. Regardless if the investors don't understand it, regardless if the U.S. market has challenges with innovation, there's other markets who don't, right? There's other markets right. that are screaming for yep. innovation yep. and saying, come here, help us think about financial services differently and what we believe is that we've created a better better marketplace for lending we've created a better micro lending product we've created the best peer-to-peer -peer model we've created the best opportunity for 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 lenders to make an impact or individual consumers to make an impact and also make a return so these types of things um, are going to resonate in multiple countries and we want to go out go there and also provide the service that we've provided here and do good in the way that we've done here Amazing, my man. I mean, absolutely. Just, uh, I think it just has such potential, and it, it's just, it just shows like what innovation is possible when it's available to to everybody, right? And that's the beautiful thing about technology is that if you're sort of willing to learn, access to the internet is becoming more and more available <laughs> to to everybody, and it's it opens up your world to an entirely different thing. It, it it helps you search for things like this, right? Like you said, we could never build this 20 years ago. You can never even search to even know how to build it probably five to seven years ago, right? Now you can search on like, how do I build a FinTech app, right? Like what's the tech stack to do that? And there's available resources out there. So I just think that whether it's Plaid, whether it's any other of these platforms, like, like you had mentioned, there's such a accessibility now for people to build you know, startups for their communities, for the problems that they see. And like you said, not just here in America, but globally, there's such a thirst for technology products to help solve issues that, you know, the government has failed to, to solve for them. You know, founders can do it. These products being available is an amazing thing. So best of luck to you and the team, my man. Keep up the great work and congrats on the B Corp certification and all upside from here. Awesome, man. I really appreciate your time and definitely thank you for, for letting uh, us tell our story. So I really appreciate that. 